Um, yeah. Hi everyone. Um, so I'm. I think like a lot of you were saying, like you still were getting confused about um how to write in four part vocal style. So I thought we're going to do another. We're going to do another lesson on it today. But like overall, I think like looking from from looking at the homework, like all of you like did all right. So um, yeah. But like, I might just go over it again today since like last week you were all saying you were pretty confused. So, um, let me just share screen. So, we have, so again, with full part vocal style, you have to write it for sopranos, altos, tenors, and basses, and each of the notes can't go above or below those ranges. So I did, I'm not sure whose, men, whose homework I mentioned it in, but like I also said like it's best not to use like their lowest note or their highest note because like even if you could sing that high or that low, you probably wouldn't be comfortable doing it. So it's best to like, so what you want to do is kind of you want, you want to write your notes so that we're, they're in a really comfortable range. So probably not more than octave so that's like where the octaves will come from so that's why you can't have voices more than an octave apart hi mia hi gracie um i've recorded just like the last two minutes of the lesson for you so you'll be able to view it on google classroom um yeah so the power alto tenor and bass right let's look at this example again i think it's a really good thing to refer to so C is always, um, so if you were to write the tonic triad of C major, you need the notes. Um, so you need the notes C, E, G, and then you double C. Well, usually you will double C. So C always has to be in the bass. Right, most of you did that very well. And then you can space out the other notes with that. So what you also need to remember is that none of the, none of the notes should go out of range. And, um, and also none of the notes should be more than an octave apart from each other. Okay, so um, except for the tenor and bass. So with the tenor and bass, you can have more than an octave if you really wanted to, like that and there and there. They're more than an octave apart, but all the other voices, if you look carefully, they're no more than an octave apart. Basically what it is, you can put, you always have to put your C in the bass, but the other notes, you can space them out however you want, but the notes have to be within range and they also have to, you know, yeah, they also have to not be within an octave apart of each other. Um, I don't think, you know, I'm gonna give you a quick assessment to see like how each of you are with four part writing. So um, let's do the tonic and dominant triads of A major in four part vocal style. And so the tonic dominant and subdominant triad of A major, remember your key signature and write out your chord notes so you can keep track of which notes like you've used and which notes you have. <clears throat> Yeah. 
Neil, I can hear you. I've drawn one example on the screen for you. Okay. Um. Yeah, Junior, the sharp goes before the note, not after the note. Or like, I would prefer if you guys use a key signature. Um, Gracie, so that's all right, but remember you need two voices in the bass and two voices like at the top. So you can't put all your voices in the treble clef or all your voices in the bass clef. You have to like put two in the bass clef, two in the treble clef. So the example I've got on the board for you, that's like how it roughly should look like. So as you can see, I have two in, I have um, two notes in the bass clef, two notes in the treble clef. Check if they're all within range. That's all right. Check if they're all, um, check if they're all within an octave of each other, except for the tune in the bass. Yep. So Emily, uh, Emma. Um, not sure where you got that D from, or is that supposed to be a C? It was supposed to be a C. Okay, if that's the case, then um, you've got more than an octave distance between your tenor and your alto. There's a lot to check, isn't there? Michael, are you all right? Um, Junior, that's good. And okay, Justin, you. Mm, All right. Um, yeah, Justin's yours is good, except that like 
even though you can put those voices that low, I wouldn't really recommend it because, like, think of it. Because four part writing is meant to four part vocal style is meant for singing, not playing. So, if imagine if you were a singer and you were told to sing like really low or really high, wouldn't make them very comfortable. So, the philosophy here is that even though you could sing that low or you could sing that high, you wouldn't necessarily want to. Um. Gracie, very well done. Uh, Gracie, do you want to add some stems to yours? It's a big improvement from last week, guys. Very well done. Okay, good Gracie, you've got the stems the right way. Uh, Michael, good job. Emma, um, yep, good job. Um, Emma, good job. Me, you might have to turn off your virtual background if you want me to be able to see your work. <laughs> it's unfortunate, but like, yeah. Um, yeah, Mia, that's good, except you can rub out those extra accidentals there since the time signature does the thing for you. But um, yeah, that looks good. So you can rub out those extra sharps that you put there because the time signature, I mean, the key signature does it there for you.
Is everyone finished? Okay, Emma, it's very good. Okay, so Phoebe, with your stems, so the base stem always points down, the ten and the outro stem would always point down, the tenor stem points up and the soprano stem points up. So what it would look like, so if you look on the screen right now, I'll use one of my examples and draw some stems for you. Soprano faces up, the outro goes down, tenor goes up, the, soprano, the bass goes down. So that's what roughly it should look like, okay? Justin, are you finished? Okay. Justin, are you, do you do not understand? Do you still not understand how to do four part writing? Because that, um, that's perfectly fine because the exercise I did just then was kind of like a test to see how well you grasp the topic of four part writing over the last week. And I think everyone's done it pretty well. So um, for the time being, I want to move on to some wrong examples. So I do um, understand most of it. You like, do understand most of it? Yeah, I do understand most of it like um basically most of it i don't understand all of the rules but like i basically get okay yeah i understand there are a lot of rules to memorize so for the time being i want to go over some wrong examples which don't follow the rules and you can kind of tell like how it either disrupts the flow or it either disrupts like the quality of the chord or just like it just doesn't make the chord sound right okay so these two that i've written right here these are correct. So this is this is for a this is the A major tonic triad by the way. So those two are correct. But say, what if I changed? Um, let's see. Okay, I'll put the E up here. So it's the C and the E is more than an octave apart. So. I'll put the right exact, I'll put the like what I originally wrote right next to it so that you guys can hear the difference. And uh, wait a second, I'll share my sound. Okay, I'm not sure if you guys can hear this. Could you hear those individual notes being played? Yeah. Okay, I'll play it then. So did you feel like how the first one was suspiciously out of place because the soprano it was way too high compared to the other notes. So the soprano stood out way too much. Let, let's hear it again. Let's hear it again. So the soprano stood out way too much as that really high note because since it was so, it was just way too high compared to the other voices, any single note that's way too low or way too high, 
it always stands out within a melody. So that's why you want to keep your voices in good range. So this is a second example. Sounds a lot more full. Let's play it again. Okay. Right? Okay. Another possible example you could make, which is, well, it's not listed in the textbook, but if you put your bass note too high, firstly, you could cram your tenor and your alto, which like wouldn't really make it nice. So if I were to write it, oh, let me just. Okay, if I just wrote, if I just wrote like that, the bass is a little too high. So the chord doesn't sound as, let's say, like how, how to say it, doesn't sound as powerful and full as it should be. Let's listen to it. Since there isn't like a really strong bass note. Okay, I'm gonna change the bass note back to a low bass note again. Oops. Okay, so now we've got a much lower bass note. Let's listen to the comparison. So the first one's with that high bass note and it doesn't really sound full enough because the bass isn't like really supporting the melody enough. And now let's listen to the second one. This one should sound much more powerful and full. Is it, can you hear why? It's because there's like a supporting really low note down there. So that's why you so that's why um one of the rules say that you can the tenor and the bass can be more than an octave apart because if you have a low bass note, it ensures well that firstly your tenor is separated well so that there is a distinct bass note going down there. Okay, so you can see, so you might have noticed that the soprano can't be too high but the bass can be too low. Well, the reason we need the bass to be low is that the bass is really important as like, well, firstly, it's the root of your chords. So you need like a really strong, powerful, low bass note right there to support the root of your chord. Let's listen to it again. Right? Okay. Uh, what's the other mistake? Okay, your voices aren't within range. Let's see how that can be applied to A major. Okay. I'll put my A up here. I don't know. Actually, I'll do that. I'll do another rule first. Your voice is overlapping each other. So what that essentially means is that your alto is lower than your tenor or your, or like your tenor is lower than your bass. You can't do that. Um, basically, yeah, because, well, the voices are meant to be listed in their specific, like, you know, order, right? If you had, like, say, a tenor that is higher than the alto, well, firstly, if you wrote it for the four-part vocal, um, like, an, if a four-part vocal choir, the tenor might be confused. They're like, hey, wait a second, why am I seeing higher than the alto? So that's going to be... It's either going to be like a laugh or it's just not going to end well. So let's listen to this wrong example of what would happen if your voices overlapped. It sounds nice, but if you were to actually give it to a choir, the tenor would be very angry with you. <laughs> okay? So, and also... Um, this is very unorthodox, but like you, gen you generally wouldn't have the bass and the tenor two octaves apart. You would just, the problem with the, I know I said that like you can have your tenor and bass as far apart as possible, but two octaves is a little bit overkill when you can just put the other note down an octave and problem is solved. So basically, don't write this or the tenor will be very angry with you. Okay, and um, let me give another example of overlapping voices like wrong, okay? This time we'll do the dominant triad for um, 
yeah, for a major. So, age. Okay. Oops, I'm oh, forgotten. Oh, Sorry, my bad. But what I do? Okay, there we go. So this is another example of the tenor overlapping the alto. Let me just first say outright that the tenors aren't happy with me. <laughs> so the alto is lower than the tenor. That's a big no, no. Um, yeah, right. Another mistake. What if your bass, what if the root of your chord wasn't the bass note? Right. So let's, let's go back to the tonic triad of A major. And what if my bass note was C? Okay, let's try that. Uh, C, A, C, E, um, A. Well, firstly, this isn't even, firstly, like, if you actually were to be right at this, then it wouldn't really be a tonic triad. It would be the tonic triad and first inversion since you're starting on C and your A has been moved to above. It's been moved to the next octave, so that would be first inversion. Um, but, but assume this was um, tonic triad um, one, okay? So let's listen to it. You can hear that there isn't really a supporting bass note down there. Well, it sound the bass note kind of sounds off. Let's listen to it again. Like the bass sounds kind of off. That's because it's the wrong note. So that means you don't really have a strong root bass supporting that chord. So that's another no no. Um, okay, what are the mistakes you can make? going out of the range. I guess we kind of covered that with this, but let's let's try, let's cover going out of range. So, um, a major tonic triad. Actually not, no, I'll tell you my, let's do G major tonic triad, since it's a little easier to, G, B. G, B, D. G. So you can already tell already that the tenor is not where it's supposed to be. The tenor is a little lower and the alto, it's also a little lower, but still with, it's technically still within range. But the tenor is already out of range. Listen, let's listen to what it sounds like. For some reason, the chord sounds low, and that's reasonable because firstly, the tenor is way too low, and the alto is also way too low. Listen, let's listen to it again. Somehow the chord doesn't sound right. Let's try another example, still with the tonic triad of G major. So if I put the G up here, G up here, and uh, G, B, and actually, no, let's go a little crazy here. Um, <laughs> the D's up there. <laughs> uh, GBDG, okay. I can already tell that the Sopranos are very angry with me. Well, firstly, the Soprano is way too high, so there's like a very distinct, um, there's like a very distinct ring there because that's Soprano's too high. Also, that's more than an octave, so I technically can't do that anyway because that's more than an octave in range. Yeah. So, and also that G up there, that's a little too high. And also the bass note isn't, 
down there, so there isn't like a real, really real supporting strong low bass note. So that kind of sounds wrong. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think that's about all. Any questions? So any question about like the wrong way? <laughs> Okay, and now I want to go back to the right ways. So let's change. Um, yeah, we're going back to A major triads. So what you really want is a low bass note, check, and the tenor a good distance away, check. And then I can put the other notes. I can put the E up here. And the A here. See, that's 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 pretty good. Now let's listen to this good example. Very full, very nice. Okay, let's do another one. So the bass note is low, and the tenor is a good distance away. And then let's see. We can put the C here. Actually, let's put this. Wait, no, what have I done? Okay, I put the C up there and the E down there. Now let's listen to this. Actually, no, let's check it first. Um, is there more than an octave between all the voices? No, there is not. Is there. Are any of the voices out of range? No, they are not. And who can tell me like which ways the stems should go? Um, let's, I'll pick Michael. So the soprano, with the soprano, the stem goes up, up down. alto, alto goes down, tenor, up, yep, down. and bass goes down. Awesome. Um, right, well, let's listen to that. Perfect. You can almost hear the four voices sounding unison. And now I want to try something interesting. I'm going to try it in form of an appoggiatura. Well, not an appoggiatura, like, uh, um, what's it called? Like if you were going to play it, like, dun -dun -dun, dun -dun -dun, so you have the core notes separate. Let's listen to how that sounds like. So I'm going to use my example here. I'm going to keep adding in. A second. Oh, what have I done? Okay, for some reason, I guess I'll just wait a second. Ah, there we go. Um, Da, da. So we have like uh um what's it called? Yeah, like a chord played with multiple notes in succession. So let's Those are all the notes of A major, and they sound and they sound perfectly well when you play them. In like that. So if, if you do play piano, uh, um, when you're writing in four part vocal style, try playing out those chords in the piano. It could really help if you're just playing them separately, just like that. And yeah. Any questions? Okay, so on a scale of one to 10, how does everyone feel about four part writing right now? Junior says a seven. Emma's a Emma's a seven or an eight. I've got a couple of chat messages. Mia's a nine. Mia, you're very confident. Confident. Um, Junior's a seven. Okay, let's. I'm gonna get you to just like do your own chords now. So let's do B flat major 
Um, okay, so let's do B flat major and um, B flat major. Oh, what have I done? B flat major. Why is not letting me tune to B flat major? There we go. So, um, so with B flat major, write the tonic dominant and subdominant triads set out in three ways. So you have to write three different ways of setting out the tonic, um, subdominant and dominant triads of B flat major. Yay. Is it tonic, subdominant, and dominant? Yeah, of B flat major set out in three different ways. Okay, I finally just I finally um discovered how to put the stems like the other way. So I think yay. <laughs> Uh, Michael, yes. We, so you write the tonic, subdominant, and dominant triads of B flat major mm -hmm. using a key signature, and want you to set them out in three different ways. So remember to put your bass note low down. Wait, is it so three three different types for tonic, three different types for subdominant? Yes. And B yeah, that's right. Okay. So there's three different types for each. Okay, Justin, so your um right, your subdominant triad, there's something wrong with your tenor. I'll I won't tell you what it is. 
And also your base is out of range. The base can't go down to E. So you so you really only have one choice to where to put your base node. Okay, um, yep, Justin, that's good. Is this all correct for them? Uh, sorry, Tony? Yep, uh, Junior, I think that's good. Emma, mm. Uh, yep, good. Um, yep, yeah, Michael, good job. I want you guys, I want you guys to feel confident in doing four part writing because later on, um, so about in grade four or five theory, there's a part, part of the requirement is that you're able to write, um, basically entire passages in four part. So basically, that would look something like this. So oh, I need to remove my virtual background. <laughs> um, wait a second. All right, so it would look something like um let me see if i have a good example to show you guys um yeah these are all right so that's all in four part and basically you're gonna have to it takes like a lot of um work to see like mark out your chords and then like write basically write out the entire thing in um four part doubling which note because later on then it's a it, you have to change like which notes you have to double and then basically it's like a mind it's, it's gonna like become like a mind game almost uh okay so i want you guys to get really used to writing in four parts Um, yep, Gracie, could you add some stems? So do we do any um other um four part local things um other than the B fat one? You were, um, did you write three, four, did you write like three ways of setting them out for each? Because I think you only wrote one. So uh, you were supposed to write like three ways for setting each one out. So could you, yeah. So like different levels? Or? Dif yeah, different ways of like setting it out. 
So basically, so with the tonic, if the tonic triad of B flat major, you want to like experiment with different ways of writing out the same chord with the same chord notes, but like put them in differently. Um, Mia. I, um, yeah, perfectly fine. So like for each of them, for like the tonic, I write out three different ways. Yeah, yeah, then, yeah, oh. that's right. Uh, wait a second, Gracie. Could you check that you got your notes for uh, the tonic triads right? It's the, so the tonic triad, it's BDF. I think you might have written like BD, B, E, G or something. <laughs> Um, yep, Emma, that's pretty good. And okay, so Junior, check your first stem. So we'll fill the subdominant, the first stem for tenor. Tenor stem, it's the wrong way. And Gracie, um, right, you fixed it. Okay. So for the first one, wait a second. The first and the third for your tonic triads, uh, the tenor and the alto is more than an octave in distance. Could you check that. And Junior, perfect. Could everyone just stop right now? Because I also want to point out something else that, so when you're writing dominant triads um, for minor scales, you always have to remember to raise like your leading note. So if you're writing it, if you're writing in four part, four part vocal style, the dominant triad of G minor, which would be D, F, A, D, you always have to remember to give the F, the F sharp, so you know you have to raise the leading note in minor scales. Okay. Um. Yeah, I want everyone to stop right there. We have ten minutes left, and I want to quickly go over lesson. Um. Was it thirteen? Let me just check. Let me just check if it was thirteen. Uh. Oh, yes, lesson 13. So, um, so four part vocal style is for, it's mostly, it's meant for a choir of sopranos, altos, tenors, and basses in you know, voice order. And, but like, so if you can play the, but you can also convert your four part vocal style chords into what's called piano style, which is, um, yeah so with the piano style it's a little harder to set out because firstly you have to make sure okay let's just take a look at what piano style actually looks like so this example here and this example here that's in piano style and truth the truth be told you actually don't use piano style as much as you would for example um yeah, you probably wouldn't use piano style in later theory as you would um, four, part, four part vocal style. So, um, 
yeah, you probably wouldn't be using piano style much anyway. So that's why I thought I wouldn't spend that much time on it. But like in in grade three exam, I think there is a couple of questions that ask you, um, is this chord in piano style or four part vocal style? So I thought I might as well teach you uh, the difference between those two right now. So piano style, as you can see, there is some full part vocal style in the fact that there is only one note in the bass and there are three notes in the treble. You still double this root and the, and the root is still in the bass, but instead one of the notes has been moved to the treble. The other difference with four part vocal style and piano style is that um, in full part vocal style, you can basically like separate your voices like an octave, but um, in piano style, the top three notes you have here can't be more than an octave, like apart, not from each other, like the whole chord can't be more than an octave apart. The reason for this is because piano style is meant, well, I guess it's kind of obvious, it's meant for pianos. And most people's right hands probably aren't bigger than an octave. So who plays piano here? <laughs> A lot of people play piano here. And most of you can't stretch an octave, right? I can't stretch more than an octave. Yeah, so most, so like most average pianists, they wouldn't be able to stretch more than an octave. So that's why like these top three notes here can't be more than an octave apart from the top to the bottom note. Does that make sense, everyone? So, um, it's not especially necessary to learn how to write chords in piano style since you probably wouldn't be using it that much anyway. I can tell you that from personal experience, but I want you to be able to differentiate between full part vocal style and piano style. Lewis, doesn't matter what note you um, put, uh, you, you take from the second um, bar. No, that's actually a really good question. No, it doesn't matter what note you take from there, as long as you can fit it so that in your right hand, or if if from the viewpoint of a pianist, in your right hand, you aren't stretching more than an octave from the top to the bottom note. So um, question two, with these um, chords, these are on piano, so they're boring. Um, is there okay? You know what? I'll, I'll make my own. So um 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 um. um. Go back to this my trusty music composition website. So I have I'm gonna write down a couple of chords in either four part vocal style or piano style, and you have to tell me which one is. So let's do this. This one. Style. Oh no, piano. Piano style, okay. Very good. Voc four part vocal. Four part. Four part. Four part vocal, ah. you can already tell easily. And. Four piano. Uh, piano style. Piano. Yeah. Right, very good. You guys are good at this. Um, For, uh, piano style. Piano style. Okay, very good. You guys are perfectly fine at this. Okay, who feels very confident in I in differentiating piano style and full part vocal style? It's not that hard, in my opinion, and. Just for comfort, you probably wouldn't be using piano style at all, like whatsoever. Um, yeah, so does anyone want to do some more four part vocal style exercises or? Can I just finish the last one? I only have two more dominant. Ah, okay. Once you're finished, I want to show everyone, since we've got five minutes left, I'll show everyone a really funny video about chords that I found online. <laughs> so
So Junior, once you're finished, you can show me and then I could, yeah, I'll just. I'm on to my last one. What? Okay, let me just check. Right, um, yeah, that's pretty good. We still have four minutes left. Uh, yeah. So there's a really funny video about like chords out here. So might as well show you guys. Um, So you know a C major chord. It consists of a root, a third, and a fifth. But what about a C major seventh? Root, third, fifth, and seventh. What about a major ninth? Root, third, fifth, seventh, and ninth. But what about the eleventh? Well, that's a problem because the eleventh clashes with the third. Eleven. So what about a sharp eleven? Hmm. Nice. How about a thirteenth? And Probably that not. Is a C major that is not sharp something chord. you're going to need. The major 13 sharp 11 chord is one of the most extended chords commonly used in jazz. Yeah, yes, I have seen that. George Probably. Russell's leading chromatic concept on the basis that it is a parent chord for the C Lydian scale. So, what's the Lydian scale again? It's a normal major scale with a raised fourth degree. So, yes, this chord, when compressed, makes a Lydian scale. And what's the pattern in this chord? So we start off with our root C. We go up a major third to E. We go up a minor third to G. We go up a major third to B. Go up a minor third to D. Up a major third to F sharp. And up a minor third to A. It's basically a repeating alternating series of major and minor thirds. Here we have a major third. And here we have a minor third. Major third, minor third, major third, minor third. Hmm. But what if we keep going? <laughs> Let's take this down an octave and let's go up. LOL. To C sharp. Up a minor third to E, up a major third to G sharp, up a minor third this is gonna to get D, ugly. and up a major third to D sharp. Let's bring this down again. Let's go up a minor third to F sharp, up a major third to A sharp, up a minor third to C sharp, up a major third to E sharp, and up a minor third to G sharp. Let's what the hell is this? This is not gonna get. No, it's just being a dance. No, it won't. Yeah. Play that no, one it won't. No, it won't. There's, there's, there's no way it's going to be a good exam. Can we play that on the bus? Up a minor third to A sharp. No, no, no. Up a major third to C. This is crazy. We're almost there. Let's go up a minor third to E sharp, up a major third to G double okay. sharp, up a minor third to B sharp, or just C. And that chord is a C major 21, double sharp 47, sharp 45, double sharp 43, <laughs> sharp 41, double sharp 39. Sharp 37, sharp 35, sharp 33, sharp 31, sharp 29. What the sharp 37, hell? 35, what is sharp, 23, sharp, 19, sharp 15, sharp 11. It is the <laughs> most super ultra mega hyper meta beta alpha omega pi chord out there. It's <laughs> what is it? seven octaves and takes three people to play on the piano. And as a matter of fact, it nearly covers the entire piano. Only seven of these chords fit in a standard 88 key piano. Okay, these just sound weird. Yep. <laughs> there are two ways to construct this chord. The first one involves the repeating pattern of major and minor thirds, which we just That's did. So the second way comes from close observation of the first abnormal extension of a C major 13 sharp 11 chord into a C major 13 sharp 15 sharp 11 chord. That chord is basically a polychord or two chords. I'm getting confused. C major 13 sharp I... you, don't, you don't have to remember this. This is just like something for the full fun sake. Is this just garbage? Major seven. I can't garbage? No, it's not garbage. But you could technically... This is technically like a real chord if you wanted it to be. I cannot memorize all of this. If you, look at you don't have to. Oh. <laughs> just look at that. 
Look at our big seven below a D major seven, which is below an E major seven, which is below an F sharp major seven, which is below an A flat major seven, which is below a B flat major seven. This Why does it have so many double sharps? Notes, like B it just sharp does. F double sharp and C double sharp and G double sharp, etc. If we take their enharmonic equivalents, we get a chord like this that is a little easier to split into these parts. And look right where the chord is. <laughs> you come back full circle back to where you started. C major 7. Wow. So C major 7, D major 7, E major 7, F sharp major 7, A flat major 7, B flat major 7, but stacked. But it's stacked. There are <laughs> repeated notes in this chord, and as a matter of fact, each note is only repeated once. So remember how the C Lydian scale is the compressed version of C major 13 sharp 11? If we were to compress C major 21, double sharp 47, sharp 45, double sharp 43, sharp 41, double sharp 39, sharp 37, sharp 35, sharp 33, sharp 31. <laughs> what is wrong with this? 25, sharp 23, There's sharp something wrong with this person, not me. <laughs> we get this. We get this. So no, we don't. better to think of this chord as a spectrum of Lydian and not a chord itself. The chord is so big that its outer extremes are not ideal placements of thirds. They sound mushy in the low end. Can you sing that, Lewis? Oh, no, <laughs> it sound mushy. How would that not sound mushy? By arpeggiating it like this. That sounds much better. If you'd like to hear more about that, reminds me of Mario. More in general, mm. consider subscribing to this channel and right, we're done. this video. I think. For more harmony, no more pain. Similar to the chord, Jacob Collier. You see something that I typed in in the chat? I'm going to send that link to the. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do. Uh, okay, I will. Or you, or you could just search. Or, or you could just search up the largest chord. It's it, the, the, it's the chord is it's the video is called the largest chord. Oh, let's see. <laughs> Send it to your send it send it to your send it to your friend who plays piano if you want. Oh, this is ginormous. Is this even allowed in this music world? Well, if you if you play it arpeggiated, it actually sounds nice. But like you probably you definitely wouldn't use that chord whatsoever if you're playing music. Okay, um, we're done. Yay! Yay! We're done. What's Joy today, homework? guys. What's the homework? Um, your your homework is going to be writing full part vocal style again, and um, yeah, it's just just writing, just doing some full part writing for homework again. We do the ones right, like we kind of um the do the piano style thing. No, you don't have to do piano style. I won't give you any work on piano style. Bye. 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 See you next week. See you. Bye. Bye, everyone.